Okay, good. Let's go to notability. And uh, so let's keep on doing our examples. And uh, so here you can notice that uh, the problem here for the injectivity is that uh, for every point, every positive point in the target set, there are two points, one positive here and one negative here that share the same image. So if we, in some sense, restrict the function only to this branch, for instance, only to the positive branch, then we will have that this is injective. And let us so do another example here. So restricting to the positive branch here means uh, change the domain of the function. We change the domain and instead of uh, all numbers, we use the numbers that are non-negative. This is what is called R plus. We will see it. Okay? Or if you prefer another notation, the semi-infinite interval zero plus infinity. Okay? From here, you go to R, you associate it to every x, x squared, and this time it is injective. It is injective because uh, the graphical representation of this function is this. Okay. This is the graphical representation of the function and uh, You see that the negative branch is no longer there, and then when you go to some element of the range, you find only one element of the domain that is mapped there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in particular, this is the basis of the definition of square root. And uh, by the way, x is equal to square root of y, namely the only non-negative number such that x squared is equal to y and uh, so but the point I want to stress by this example is that f is injective and also the curious way in which we obtain an injective function we took a non-injective function and we restricted it we restricted its domain to a suitable set. This is the, the strategy. And then let me consider another notion, which is very important, another, sorry, it is a notion, so it is a definition. So a map F from the set A to the set B is called surjective what does it mean? if simple definition is the following the range of F is equal to the whole set B. Remember that the range of F is the set of all elements of B that are reached by the map. So we are saying that a map is subjective if every element of the target set is reached by the map. In the sense that there is one element of the domain that is mapped there. OK? 
okay so another example again f from r to r that associates to every x x square is this subjective or not the answer is not it is not because if you consider the graph you see that the points of the image are non negative so negative points for instance minus 1 does not belong to the range of f but it belongs to r which is our b our target set so this is not subjective But again, probably we can see that if we remove the negative part of the target set, then the function can become subjective. So another example says if you have f from r to r plus, so to x larger or equal to 0, associates to every x, x squared, so it is surjective. How to verify this fact graphically? It is very simple. You take only the positive part of the y-axis, only the positive part. and uh, take a point in the positive part and you see that a horizontal line passing through this point meets the graph of the function in this case in two points but there are no longer the points here in the negative part where a horizontal line does not meet the graph all points here are reached by the map so this is subject Okay. Another definition after injective and subjective, of course, we can give also a definition for functions that are neither injective nor subjective. A function f, which is injective and subjective, is called bijective. And uh, it is uh, a correspondence one to one. It is a correspondence one to one. And uh, from Euler Venn diagram's point of view, situation is as follows here. And uh, I give you just the intuition of that, and it is not rigorously correct what I need going to say uh, but intuitively a uh, bijection namely a uh, bijective function between two sets A and B
can be defined if and only if A and B have the same number of elements because to every element of A corresponds one and only one element of B and vice versa. So correspondence one to one can be established only between sets that have the same number of elements. This is obvious if you think, for instance, of the finger of the fingers of a uh, um, uh, hand and the fingers of the other hand. They are five, of the fingers of the hand and the fingers of, uh, of a foot. But if the number of elements you're referring to is not finite, is infinite, like in ordinary numerical set, this idea that I give you just as an intuition, I don't want to put some rigorously firm notion on that, but this idea opens uh, the, the way to something very interesting, how to count infinity and so on. We will do it in the, in the remain of, the, of this lecture and probably also in the lecture of, of the next week. However, this is the, the, the intuition. And the, the last question I want to, to answer when uh, speaking about uh, uh, maps uh, is, is the following. When is it possible to reverse the map? So what do I mean? I mean that you have a map, this is A, this is B, so you have a map from A to B. And you want to reverse the arrows. And notice that this is possible unless you don't have a situation like that, with two elements of the domain mapped into the same element of the target set. Because when you try to go back from here, you don't know which road to follow. By definition of map, you can follow only one road. Here you have two. So if you want to reverse a map, that it means that uh, when you reverse the arrows, you obtain still a map, it is mandatory that every dot of the domain is sent to different dot in the target set. In other words, that the map is injective. Okay? So, if F is injective, then it is possible to define the inverse map f minus 1 such that f to the minus 1 has as a domain the range of f and as a target set a and to every y it associates the only x in A such that f of x is equal to y. The fact that it is only one, this only, it is very important in order to, to define a map, f minus one as a map. This only here is due to the fact that 
is due to the fact that uh, F is injective. Okay? And uh, so we can go back to previous examples. This examples is uh, is the usual one if you have f from r r plus to r associated to every x x squared this is injective then invertible and f minus 1 from range of f which is r plus to r associates to every y square root of y defined as before the unique non-negative number such that its square is equal to y Okay. So, in this course, uh, invertibility will be always uh, connected to injectivity. In the course of geometry, you will have another context and then you will associ associate uh, uh, to invertibility the idea of bijectivity. Okay? So, think of it when you will be in a geometry course. From the rigorous fundamental point of view, they are right. It is like in the course of geometry. From the point of view of the use of mathematics, of mathematics we will do here uh, probably it is more useful to think of invertibility as a consequence of the only injectivity okay now this is all for uh, for this part and now we go to numeric numerical set the net the next lecture will be on numerical set the next part of this lecture